Press is a political and media analyst for CNN, as well as the co-anchor of newsstand CNN and Time. Here to tell us what the hell happened today is Jeff Greenfield. Now, uh, Jeff, there's so much to talk about. It is now 1.15 uh, in the morning. You've had all night to uh, think about what exactly has been happening today with uh, Monica Lewinsky's testimony. It was a really exciting day. We had in-depth live coverage of the car coming up, the door opening. We had uh, Elsa Clench analyze the matching pumps and uh, purse with the dress to make sure... I talked about that earlier, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But basically, for all of the furor, I think the president's going to be okay as long as he keeps his principal allies, which, of course, are people like you. People like me. His most important allies in all this have been the late-night comedians, you and Leno and Letterman, Marr, mm -hmm. because presidents get in trouble when they surprise the country, when they, they, unexpected things happen. Johnson says he's the peace candidate, and he goes to war. Mm -hmm. Nixon's law and order, and he shreds the Constitution, right? Now, what have you been telling the country, all of you guys, for six years about this president, he's, basically? He's a great man? No. <laughs> Uh, basically, what you've been telling the country, and I need to put this in non-cable terms, is the president will have close personal relations with almost anything of the female persuasion, right? Um, yeah, sometimes we sort of allude to that. I would think so. <laughs> Not tonight, of course. And so, and you've been telling him this since before he was even elected, right? We started doing this when he was still governor, governor of Arkansas. Right. And yeah. don't right. forget, we also say he eats a lot. Yeah. yeah. In that, fairness, Andy's yeah. right. We're going to leave that straight line alone for present purposes. <laughs> All right. But the point is, so when this story broke, the reaction of most of the country was, yeah, and, right. so, right. what are you telling us we don't know? And as long as, as long as you guys keep hitting away at the president as a, as a creature of passion, as long as the country says, well, we know this already, I, then... I love creature of passion, well, by the way. <laughs> We are, Pity him, he is a creature of passion. <laughs> we all have to be, uh, we all have to be very careful about vocabulary in this story. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be okay. I mean, his other great ally, of course, are us. Because I think the more we cover this story endlessly, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day on every cable network, the more the country says, in effect, all right already. And so there's no element of surprise here. I and mean, when people forget about something like Watergate, is this was a, it was a more innocent time. Right. It, it was a shock to a lot of people, that the President of the United States would, would play fast and loose with the Constitution. Right, but this is not a shock to people, no, and, and, and you think the media by now, they just, they're just they completely overdoing it. They're incapable of waiting for the story, they oh, just... Yeah, well. yeah it's a, look, it's a real story, but there's so many of us now, right. that the idea of somebody saying, why don't we wait and find out what's going on? Well, that's a good point. What do you think that she said today? What might she have said today? Right. I don't know. Right. You don't know. But what could she have said today? Right. What might she have to say tomorrow? Right. What could the president say in two weeks? And I think the more we do that, the more the public pretty much says, you know, we've heard this story. Why don't you wait till we find out what's going on? Now, don't you think everyone's saying we're not going to hear? You know, we're not going to hear what happened. It's behind closed doors. Isn't this going to leak by like sometime tomorrow or something? Not, not tomorrow, but but uh, uh, in Washington, these kinds of things come out before they're supposed to all the time. So we'll know, we'll know sooner rather than later, but not, not right away, because, because this one is big enough and potentially explosive enough that I think they're going to try to keep it quiet. But it's not going to prevent people from speculating. Right. And the fact that we don't know anything is there, it doesn't mean we're not going to report. The media doesn't want to find out too much because that will end the story, right? You want to keep it going. You want to no. keep it going as long as possible so Geraldo can just keep talking about it, right? <laughs> You know, There's a show now where you can watch somebody watching Geraldo talk about it. There's actually, and it's very good. Check it out. <laughs> there are a lot of journalists who say we hate the story. We right. want it to go away so we can cover the real issues like HMO reform and the Asian currency crisis. Now, there may be some journalists who mean that, yeah. and I think there are. But I've got to tell you something. You, if, you, if you shot us full of sodium pentothal... Mm -hmm. The yeah. truth serum. Thank you. Uh, I had more respect for the audience than you did, <laughs> And, um, our yeah. audience sits in a bathtub late at night, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about my audience, yeah. I'm going to talk more slowly now. The big White House, see, in Washington. If, uh -huh. you, if you shot us up with truth serum and said, okay, would you rather cover HMO reform or, which takes a lot of work, 
Yeah. And the, this audience may not be riveted. Or do you want to speculate about the most intimate, embarrassing details about a president's sexual practices? I have, think in all honesty, a lot of the press would say, we'll keep this going. Because the truth is that while a lot of people say they don't care, the ratings are up every time this, this story blows up again. Right. So the trick here is to make stories like HMO reform sexy. Sexy. Right? right? Got any ideas? To say we caught something going on over at that HMO no. reform thing and the there's a trick. stain on a document and oh yeah, huh? <laughs> the hardest what happened? Trick. What's HMO reform? We need you guys to help. We need you and Leno and Letterman to start doing heavy comic material and HMO. I'll call them on my home. bat phone right now. <laughs> This is really yeah. going to do it for us. Yeah, right. Three accounts. Hey, Dave. Us. It's me, Conan. <laughs> O'Brien. Conan O... Oh! <laughs> 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 So was this doctor, this nurse, and this hospital administrator walking to a bar? <laughs> right. um, I don't know. I think it's going to... So, before we go, what is the future? Tell us the future. You know more than we do. Uh, what's going to happen to the future of American politics? Are, are candidates now going to have to be squeaky clean, or does this actually make it easy for everybody? When Gary Hart, I was going to say got caught with his pants down, but that's another one of those expressions he can't use anymore. When Gary Hart got in trouble yes. uh, at the start of the 88 campaign, of a creature of passion, yeah. everybody said that this is going to do is no candidate's going to run for office who has anything in his past that is potentially embarrassing. Who was the next guy we elected? Well, there Bill you Clinton. go. Yeah. So I think Wasn't that, Bush in between? No. Bush was the guy we elected in 88, but the next guy we elected, the next cycle, was Bill Clinton. Okay. I think there are people who want this job, uh, who really want to be president, even if there are things in their past they have to worry about, if they have other virtues. I mean, Bill Clinton's very smart. He has uh, tremendous political skills. He was able to overcome all those rumors, and he's, we should remember, for all of the controversy, he's still the president of the United States who was elected and re-elected and has, still has high approval ratings. So I'm not sure if private lies are going to be that big a deal. I mean, so in the future, uh, if a president's doing a good job, he can pretty much walk around naked, you think? <laughs> think Hello, America. Good to see you. I think that depends on which president. I can think of a couple. William Howard Taft weighed 300 pounds. This was not, would not have been a good idea for him. <laughs> we don't want to see him walking around. No. Uh, newsstand CNN and Time is Sundays at 10 o'clock p.m. on CNN. And you're, you're pretty much everywhere, too, right? We can... I do. Uh, I haven't done the sports report yet, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> only a matter of time. You've got to make it sexy. Uh, <laughs> All right. Jeff, thank you well, very much for coming by. You. Jeff Greenfield, everybody. We'll take a break. When we come back, Monster Magnet will be here. Stick around. show of the evening. Do you want to thank all my guests? French Stewart, thank you so much for being thank here, and you. congratulations. Thank you. Lovely wife. Our thanks to Jeff Greenfield for being here and setting us straight. I also want to thank Monster Magnet for being here on the program, number one rock song in the country. You got your Andy Richter, you got your Max Weinberg, stuff. stay tuned for later, everybody. See you tomorrow.